Go. Hello and welcome everyone. This is the Halted Production Show. My name is Austin. I am here with my good friend Donnie. How are you doing, Donnie? Uh, pretty good so far today, Austin. How about you? I am great today, and tomorrow hopefully will be even better because the night we're recording this, it is the $1.7 billion jackpot for Mega Millions. <laughs> All right, so, so I'm just going to ask you this right now. When I win the Mega Millions tomorrow, you're what giving would, you're what giving would me you a million. Like me to buy you. Um, I'd like you to buy me a nice house, not not too nice, no, like a no, hundred. No, 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 one car. Hundred, you're one car. One oh car. shit! Now, I'm not going to be greedy and say like a stupid expensive car. Okay. You I'm want just like going to third. You go. No, Maybe a I Geo want. Metro? The I want the exact style Aston Martin that Doug Demuro, Tavarish, and now Shifting Lanes has. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's like thirty grand, so you you can afford that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's a drop in the bucket. You know, I, I might even put a um, an Audi R8 in there just to even out. You know, try to make it a level a level hundred that you spend on me. Okay. Well, in that case. I need a Saab 97 Aero, which is the Trailblazer SS yep. from Saab. Um, and living in Florida, I feel like I need a convertible. So I'm going to need an M4 convertible. If I win, I can get you those. All right. You heard it here first, folks. It's a deal. Uh, yeah, hell, next if, week, if neither I win, of us will have these. <laughs> if I win... I will make a promise to every person who is currently subscribed <laughs> to give them a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> everybody, everybody subscribed to this channel gets a Chevy Monte Carlo and a Geo Metro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but seriously, we are talking about a car today that is the reason why I started this part podcast. Why it is what I pitch to you as the car to start this podcast on yes you started rambling about this car and then said why are we not recording this and i went well let's see what happens and here we are folks i'm sorry that i make bad decisions <laughs> this car is it's one of my favorite cars of all time i say that about every car on this list <laughs> we, in one way or another not hit one yet that you don't like in one way or another um, no, the Monte Carlo. I do not like. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, in that case, when I win the Mega Millions tomorrow, I'm filling your yard with Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> well, this car is called the Fisker Karma. It is one of the weirdest, most bizarre cars <laughs> of all time. Just the entire history of it. And because it makes no sense, neither will this podcast. Yeah, we apologize in advance because this will bounce around and this you, you, this is going to be like a Tarantino film of podcasts. Do, do you know how we know this? This is our fourth time recording this. <laughs> We've had some technical issues with... Uh, Donnie has had some technical we issues. We have had some technical issues. <laughs> I have four like recordings this. of the same podcast. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about the brainchild of Henrik Fisker. The man who brought us the BMW Z8. The man who brought us the BMW M5. I think what he did was he sat down and looked at both of those and said, what if I made one that was electric? And, and he took the roof from the X5 and the fenders from the Z8 and squished them together and gave it this obnoxious chrome grill. And you have a Fisker Karma. And a vegan interior. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Because we have to think of the duckies and the bunnies and the penguins in the Arctic. Exactly. But we Antarctic? will get to we will get to the um, vegan interior in a minute. <laughs> and I'm sorry, everyone. My um, roommate is coming in, so my dogs are going to bark real quick. But we will just keep rolling through it, and I will try to edit that out and post. <laughs> because Donnie does no editing. <laughs> Look, Donnie does all the marketing for the show, okay? You're welcome. You post on Twitter. 
<laughs> director of marketing. <laughs> All right. So, the, so the Karma, it was it was sold from 2011 to 2012, and it was like you said, the brainchild of Henrik Fisker. Um, it's a range extended electric. Oh, sorry. Um, and it ranged from ooh, range. I used range twice. It, the price ranged from 102 to 116 with 1800 of them being delivered. Yeah. 1800 out of what? 22, 2400 produced somewhere. There is five to 600 Fisker Karmas sitting in a grain silo ready to be deployed. <laughs> Well, let's not forget, during Hurricane Sandy, there was a fire at the port in Newark. Yes. And two dozen of these went up in flames. Yes, two dozen went up in flames. Because remember, electric cars got wet and caught fire. This one in particular. Which makes no sense. This one in particular. But but this actually, the the Fisker Karma has a direct correlation to what's in my driveway what is that the two liter ecotech engine ah yes in this car is the same sand supercharger used in my ion redline and it is well i would not and but but it produces a whole lot more power because of the electric electric motors Yes, a whole lot more power for all of... The 5,300 pounds? Yeah. Well, well, what's the electric range on it? 104 miles? Yeah. Or no, not not even. The electric range is like... 32 uh, miles. 32 miles. The 32-mile electric range. So for that 32 miles, it produces more power than my Saturn Ion Redline. Just as electric. But when you have it on the range extended, which it was meant to be. Yes, you have, a, you have a two liter engine that basically works as a giant generator for the battery packs. So it just idles all day long. And <laughs> the amazing part of this car, the why did they not see that before part? You know where the exhaust outlet is for the gasoline engine? I'm guessing somewhere extremely stupid. It's in the back of the driver's side front fender. That can only go well. So if you're sitting in traffic and you have the windows down because it's a nice day like it has been for the last couple, the exhaust is coming right up the door panel and in the car. Well, you need to offset the (laughs) veganism of the car somehow. (laughs) Yeah, the the vegan eco-chic model with its uh (laughs) reclaimed wood dashboard and uh where is it i just lost it you just lost it 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 had like um the suave um seats and just a completely eco-friendly interior it's something that i mean that's something people buy just to say Oh, my car is vegan. Oh, it's, yours is your Prius? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's it's so that you can be the district manager of Whole Foods one day. It, it, it's so you can be the whole foodiest of the whole food people. <laughs> and then we, we got to talk for a minute about the weight here. Yeah, the natural fabrics, interior, ultra suede dash, and animal-free, cruelty-free seat stuffing. But, Donnie, I have to ask you something. Yes, that's right. I will not own a car unless the seats are stuffed directly with bald eagles. Oh, what, what about the dinosaurs? <laughs> what dinosaurs? No one cares about the dinosaurs. That you put in the gas, that the gas is made out of. Yeah, dinosaurs never existed. Well, sorry, to I didn't know. dinosaurs never existed. <laughs> what about dinosaurs? Um, they don't count. They're already dead. <laughs> dinosaurs so, can't feel pain when they've been crushed under the weight of the earth for millions of years. So I want to talk about the weight here for a minute because it's astounding. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's classified as a subcompact car because of the interior space. And, and it's it a 5,300 5, pound subcompact car. And it it has a zero to 60 of, what is it, like um, six, or I can't even read my handwriting, 6.3 seconds, zero to 60, and 125 mile an hour max speed. Yeah. That's, that's worse than like an F-150. I think that's worse than an F-250. I, I think a, a, an E-350 van will give you a better zero to 60 time and a higher top speed. I actually, I can vouch for the van. <laughs> because, picking up a lot of children. <laughs> because there may have been a time when Donnie was moving and actually, no. Well, okay, we'll go off on this story real quick. So I had a, a Saturn wagon that died in the middle of winter and I had to get to and from work for the next couple of days. I went to U-Haul and rented an E350 van because I was too young to actually rent a car from any place at the airport where I lived. You feel my pain. And I know for a fact that you can get an E350 van to 130. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly in Mexico. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, this was over. This was over a year ago. Its statute of limitations have expired. Statute of limitations, you're good. Yeah, but if anyone from U-Haul is listening to this, I never did that with a van. Nope, it, never. It, it, it was using a Home Depot van. Uh, it was a budget van. Oh, budget, got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like fifty three hundred pounds, even though it is all wheel drive with electric motors and a CVT, I could only imagine that this thing is going to be. It, it's going to be like driving a 1980 Impala from a stoplight. Speaking of boats, should I tell everybody on here what my new car is? No, no, we need to hold off on that. Are, are we going to do an episode on that? We're going to, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to get to, uh, even though, even though they brought it back in 2017. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. But they, they, it nope. was discontinued nope. for so long. Nope, 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 nope. I'm thinking we have to. Nope. All right, we'll bicker about this offline. Let's let's finish this episode. Uh, this episode is just a train wreck, and I've <laughs> I've dealt with that. I, I've come to peace with that. Um, so for for all twelve of you that are listening, we're sorry. That that one dude that is just in love. Um. Oh, who, and while we're at this, um. I've got to give a shout out to Cal Addison. Did you see he sent us an email? Yes, I we did. We got our first hate mail. No, I it mean... was a suggestion. <laughs> it was a suggestion. And he said, have you guys thought of reviewing these old reliable beauties? I think um, this may be one of the best engineer cars to date. Yeah, Thanks, and he's talking Cal about Addison. an old German diesel, which an is just S420. fantastic. S420. Mercedes <laughs> yeah. S420. And Cal, we are going to get to that. We put it on the top of the list. Yeah. After it'll be the next thing that we record after today. Cause we're recording three episodes today. And then, um, Garrett Sarian, um, he comments on every video and he says, you guys are the shit. Keep them coming. Hashtag proud few. Hashtag one of 12. <laughs> oh, guys, we, uh, we, we could do this without you, but we'd rather not. Um, well, but we, we'd have we'd have the discussions either way. Yeah. Yeah. And and we would record it and put it out there. I mean, if you're listening to it, it's your fault. So uh, I, I want to bill us for your mental health <laughs> counseling. I want to bring up something that I know is going that takes your that just pushes your buttons. Ooh, ooh, ooh. is there one that's a donk? No, it's oh, the sunroof. It's the sunroof <laughs> oh. on the Fisker Karma. You mean the lack thereof? Um, it is, or the, yeah. So it's, uh, uh, I'm talking about the solar roof. Yes. The solar panel roof. Which Toyota did better. Yes, Toyota did better. But let's talk about how bad Fisker did it. Okay. So the sunroof, or the solar roof. The solar roof. I'm sorry, guys. I've had a long day at work. <laughs> the solar roof is the most useless solar panels in the world. They don't power the main battery. They don't 
how they don't charge anything or they don't charge anything but the auxiliary battery the the spare battery like why why do you have that it doesn't yeah. do anything at least in the prius it charges the battery that starts the engine and runs the hvac when it's hot or cold yeah this is just sitting there for people to be like oh my god i have solar panels on my roof yeah i'm currently in the market for a suburban and i'm gonna put a i'm gonna put a solar panel on the roof to power the battery that will run the fan for when i'm sleeping in it at lemons races that it'll be more useful than the roof on a fisker karma yes so where do we go from here what do we talk about (laughs) well i mean how many of them do you have for sale around you because with 1800 being sold here in america you know they've only been out there for five years um let's see i have i have uh one for sale on craigslist but let's see, about a month ago when we first recorded this, I had six. <laughs> I had six for sale. I still have the same two for sale on Craigslist. Apparently and, people and, are buying them. And if you do a nationwide search on Auto Trader, there's 28 for sale. 2% of the cars sold are for sale on Auto Trader. Let's see, we got an EcoSport that was just put up, actually, 19 hours ago. This is a new one. It's 42.9, 20,000 miles. Did you see, after we recorded the one the one episode, um, Doug DeMiro did a article? I, I tagged you in it on Facebook. Yeah. How th- there was that really, really high mileage one. Yeah, and that and that doesn't make sense to me. Because from what I understand, they all catch fire at about 50,000 miles. Apparently not this one. Not this one. Yeah, because I've got, I've got the same brown on brown with the solar roof for sale in Miami. That's been there for three months now. Every one of them is sold on... Atlanta, like, that was there, they're not there anymore. So people are buying them in Atlanta. Yeah, it's... These are going to be weird niche cars. They're they're not going to be the Prius that you can put three, four hundred thousand miles on. They're not going to be the EV1 that they're all, you know, brought back and crushed. Which General Motors, I hate you anyway. But you you love General Motors. You have a thing for them. I do. I do. It's, it's a love hate relationship. But I hate what you do, but I love what you make. I hate what they make and hate what they do, except for the ones I love. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's weird with them, but yeah, that I the... I don't I don't think that there's anything that would make me buy a Karma. You know, if if I win the Mega Millions tomorrow, you'll buy I'm, me a Karma. I'm buying two, one for me and one for you, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a. Uh, we should do a reliability test on them and just drive them around the country, because yeah. on it because if you win the if you win the Mega Millions, you're paying for everything for me. Oh yeah. Oh, for yeah. for, for the re- for the rest of my life. Or the Just, road trip will go on. Nope. Nope. For the rest of my life. Yeah, for the road trip that will go on. But uh, I have to quit my job in order to do that. Yeah, and you can get another one when we come back. Working um, for you. Curating <laughs> your cars. <laughs> what do you do? I I move pieces of shit around all day. How much well, do you get my- paid? Four million a year. <laughs> My friend has a uh, has a very eclectic car collection that I oversee. What really? What's in it? Well, he's got a an, a Saab station wagon, a Saab SUV. He's got a couple weird like old Geo convertibles. 
it's the only car collection that you could buy today for like 10 grand and it's 130 cars <laughs> he has seven pontiac grand am gts why i don't know why not Por qué no? <laughs> so do we need to talk about all the controversy that's come with this car all the lawsuits and the fire hazards and stuff like that I mean, we've talked enough about the bad of this vehicle, but yes, we need to. So, well, let's talk about the good. It looks amazing. It's an awesome car. It's rare, <laughs> and it is brilliant in every way except <laughs> what we've talked about. I disagree on all points that you just made. So what you're going to need to do is shut up, and then we're just going to talk about the bad now. <laughs> Go for it. So the bad of this car is there was a lawsuit. Tesla, cars catch fire because of a coolant leak onto a battery. Um, when you send them for, to Top Gear, they just don't work. Um, just everything goes wrong with them all the time. And then they were... They had to file for bankruptcy after what the sole battery maker just filed for bankruptcy as well. Yeah, A one two three systems filed for ba- filed for bankruptcy after the battery recalls. Fisker wasn't able to find somebody else to make the batteries. That seems like they could have probably done that. Yeah, it. You know, I, I'm noticing a trend with what we do. The Lincoln Blackwood, Ford couldn't find anybody to make the plastic bed. Fisker couldn't find anybody to make the batteries. Um, John Bricklin couldn't find anybody to make a Yugo work. That's why these cars are failing and are not in production. Because of the companies and not the consumers. I'm... As much as I dislike the Fisker, I'm going to say yes to that. It, this I was think a, it, it would have it sold, like the Tesla. This would have been fantastic as a Tesla competitor if it was as good as the Chevy Volt. Which, this isn't made to be all electric. So that just needs to jump out. It, this isn't no, made no, to be vo- all the Volt is the same idea. It's gasoline generator with an electric battery. I don't even think this was made to be an efficient car. This was made to be <laughs> this a was flashy. Made to be a fuck you to Tesla. It, Tesla didn't even really exist at this point. I mean, yeah, they did the they they existed. They had you know what the the first Model S out. They had no, the Roadsters was... out. They had the Model S's out. And 2012, they were announcing the Model X? No, I think that was like 2014. God, that seems so short ago. No, 2015 or 2016, they released the Model 3. No, it's got to be. The Model X started shipping in September of 15. Hmm. So probably. The Model S in June of 12. So same time. So they. Re- Let's see. Tesla went public in 2010. And it began Tw- shipping the Model S in June of 2012. And then. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's all, that's all that really Tesla has ever done because they're dumb. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Tesla. I I can tell, and I will, I will be completely against electric cars, even though I love the EV1, even though you know I worked for Toyota, I schlepped Priuses across the country and Ooh. marketed them, and I just thought of another tr- uh, of a truck we have to do before they bring it back. What? The Ranger, so we can talk about the electric Ranger. 
No. Um, yes. So, you know, I, I'll i never own a Prius. And I, okay. I will be against the electric car until I can get in one in my driveway in Daytona and not have to get out of it until I'm in San Francisco. Can I tell you something that's going to make you very ashamed of me? Uh, I'm always ashamed of you. I've been looking at Nissan Leafs. I know you have. You, I've been, you've been telling me about this. I've been looking at them, and they're so tempting because with my new job, I'm driving so far to work every day. You know you know what I would honestly like to see you get? What? A Mitsubishi IMEV. That, that doesn't – that gets me less than one way. What's the range on that? Point, not buying an electric car. Austin, if you're worried about fuel economy, I think if you go back to episode seven, we solved that. Get a Geo Metro. Get a Geo Metro. <laughs> I need a reliable fuel economy. Hey, Austin. Don't say get a Geo Metro. Get a Saturn SC2. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to put a not safe for work warning on this one. Too. Not, not doing it. No one listens. <laughs> I think the, I think the people that listen have expected, have come to expect this from us. Yeah, but, probably. But Austin, you used to be a car salesman. I did. This is common yeah. knowledge. Yep. You weren't a good one, but you were one. I was a good one. I paid, I, I, Provided for my family, I was a good one. Go ahead and pitch me the Fisker Karma. I'm walking into the dealership. I need a four-door sedan with excellent fuel economy. I'm thinking about a hybrid. Pitch me the Karma. Hey, Donnie. Do you shop hey, at Whole Foods? Uh, no, actually. I prefer Trader Joe's. Well... Even better, because you know what everybody would love to look at while while you go into Trader Joe's? A Fisker Karma. And there, that is the only reason you would buy one. <laughs> I, I don't really think there's any pitching this. It's either you want it or you don't. Exactly. There's not a, a sales pitch to go along with it. Either you really love it like I do and would get one, or you really don't love it like you and won't get one. Yeah, I... There's there's no reason that this should be anyone's daily driver. I this There's a guy where I live in Douglasville that daily drives one. I see him get on the interstate like three times a week. I've seen this car when I was up there in August. You, you saw it while we were there? Yeah. Yeah, he, he daily drives a Fisker Karma. And he's been doing it for a couple of years. So, I mean, it has to be somewhat reliable. Or he has five of them that are identical. <laughs> <laughs> and he just moves his license plate from one to the other as he goes along. The cop's like, didn't I see this catch fire yesterday? No, Ossifer. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, no. All no, right. no, no. You're, if you look over there on the side of the road, right where we are, there's your other car. <laughs> No, sir. No, not 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 mine. Must have been another person with a Fisker Karma. Uh, All right. So, well, so I, Austin, what are your final words on the Karma? I think that, like I said earlier, it's a beautiful car. It was a great idea. If it had been implemented better and better decisions upon the company, we would still have it. But there were bad decisions. It It just wasn't a good time for it. So it ended up going to hell. In final words, I would buy one. If one came to me at the right price, I would get one. If one showed up at my door, I wouldn't instantly sell it. I'd drive it for a day. And then sell it. Oh, yeah, definitely. If you could get it started. <laughs> if I could put the fire out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Donnie, I'm going to let you do the closing on this. All right. Well, that was episode 10. A whole 10 episodes, Austin. Can you believe it? Uh, this, I, I this can't. This one idea that came to us while we were drinking in your garage. I, we've well, now to recorded be, 10 episodes. To be fair, I've had this idea for like a year now. Just I have, haven't found somebody stupid enough to do it with me. 
just you didn't pitch it to the right person. <laughs> exactly. And now I found the right person, and we are 10 episodes in. No, episode 10, whatever shit show this was, <laughs> it's it's down in the books. So All right. And, and ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, children of all ages, and those that are gender fluid, we don't want to exclude anyone. I do. Uh, we... <laughs> I'm kidding. Georgia. Um, you live in Florida. That's worse. Don't even go there. <laughs> We're the New York of the South. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for listening. If you like us, please uh, feel free to tie a relative up or somebody that you like and make them listen to us. Uh, you can shoot us an email for suggestions or hate mail at haltedproductionshow at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at haltedprodshow. Austin is on Twitter at Austin's Garage YT. I'm on Twitter at DM Petruniak. Good luck spelling that. And I think that about does it for all the plugs that we need to make. Uh, what are your final words, Austin? My final words are thank anyone for getting 31 minutes and five seconds into this. And everyone have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.